So people who are watching from India, they know Scorn and people who don't know Scorn, you would have probably seen people dancing the songs of Hare Krishna, Hare Rama. Spending one week in Moscow, your boy is finally able to read a Russian newspaper. I was just kidding. I was in the metro and a lady was distributing it for free, and I also saw like there was a big, huge pile of newspapers. Okay, so I'm in Moscow metro, and here you have like so many free newspapers. I mean, of course, these you can take, and there are few people who are distributing it to other people as well. Uh, I come from India. In India, you have to pay at least 5 to 10 rupees to get like a newspaper. Yeah, so apparently in Moscow, they give newspapers for free. Right now, your boy is actually going to the Escon Temple in Moscow. People, if you're watching from India, you would know what Escon is and people who are new to... Okay, so newspaper, I, I can't read this, so this has to go in the bin. So people who are watching from India, they know Escon and people who don't know Escon, you would have probably seen people wearing orange clothes, dancing on uh, the songs of Hare Krishna, Hare Rama. If you don't know ISKCON, ISKCON is basically International Society for Krishna Consciousness and in Russia, Moscow or in Russia, they have like close to 50,000 active followers. So yeah, let's just go and see how ISKCON Moscow is functioning. But I think before we go, I have to look for a bus, which I'm like, I'm still I'm able to read the Russian newspaper, but I'm not able to navigate myself through the cities with the bus and everything. So I have to take bus T86. I just saw like in Moscow, they have these seats reserved for old people with that stick sign. I think I'm gonna take this seat. Six more stops and I will be at the Krishna Mandir. Uh, by the way, I'm not using Google Maps when I'm in Moscow, I'm using Yandex Maps. That's what people told me, this works pretty fine. So yeah. Okay, so we are here. Okay, so I am from India and I totally forget, forgot, like today is the Indian festival called Ram Navmi and uh, I, I had no idea. I just came here randomly and there are like so many people celebrating Ram Navmi and everyone is wearing those traditional Indian sarees and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just here looking at the views. Yeah, this is Moscow, Russia, and this is how the temple looks from the outside. Yeah, and on the entrance, you have like these two big. in Pakistan as well, right? Yes, of course. In Pakistan. Yes, I, I was I was not expecting like Iskon will be in Pakistan. No, no, no. There is a Iskon in Pakistan, in Karachi, and also there are the many temples of Iskon in Pakistan. In Pakistan? Yes. Lovely. Now it's time to go home. Hurry ball. Hurry ball. Hurry ball. <laughs>
Hari bol. Sitara. Okay, just next to the temple, there's one Indian kitchen, just right next to it. So your boy is gonna try the Indian food. It's a long time. I think uh, it's been one and a half years. I have not went to India. So yeah, whenever I come to these Indian events, even in, when I was living in Germany, whenever I used to go to these kind of events, yeah, it feels different as an Indian. I mean, I don't know as a foreigner how does it feel, but yeah, it feels good. Now I'm gonna try the Indian food. Hopefully I won't be disappointed, hopefully. Because in Germany, whenever I used to eat Indian food, they, it used to disappoint me. Yeah. One, one, this also. <laughs> After I went to the Indian restaurant yesterday, uh, I actually saw like two girls wearing the Indian sari and I went to them and I started chit-chatting. And then I realized like they were uh, supermodels and they have they would like one was 22 one was 23 and they have been working since the age of like 14 she went to japan when she was 14 so because of her modeling and everything so then i think they both were 22 and they were like oh, we are so done with this whole modeling industry so much of travels is involved you can't have stability in their life so yeah i mean it was super fun like how people i mean i'm 26 and when i have these kind of conversations uh with other 20 year olds figuring out life what they actually want so it's it's i mean always fun that's why i couldn't record on the table but yeah two three days ago i was uh, editing a video in a cafe a 15 year old girl was sitting there and she was watching what i was doing on my laptop and then she was like what are what are you doing i was like i'm editing a video and she was like oh i'm 15 i don't know what i have to do i might i, I might become a blogger or i want to be a musician I feel like everyone is lost, no one actually knows what they are up to, just just go with the flow of life. When I was 18 till 23 I did law and then afterwards I was doing YouTube and then I was like let me just do a masters in Berlin and now I'm again doing YouTube. So I, actually no one knows, everyone is lost, just do whatever the fuck you want. At one point we started talking about like the marriage age in Russia, marriage age in India, marriage age in Germany. So. Yeah, I mean, they were 22, 23 year olds, but uh, they were planning to get married like in next uh, one year. And I mean, as an Indian, I asked like, isn't it too early? And but they explained like how Russia is a traditional society. I mean, it looks all European from the outside, but like Russian values are a little. Uh, I mean, that's what they told me. I don't know how life is outside Moscow, but yeah, they were like, yeah, like coming from a traditional Russian family you usually get married at around like 23, 24, 25 and I feel like that's the age in India as well like my sister got married at the age of 27 in Germany when I uh, used to ask my friends uh, what, what are their plans of getting married I mean I would say 80% had no plans till the age of 30 20% uh, had so I mean I don't know uh, as a 20 year old there's no script there's no script of life like Previous generation, they used to have like scripts, like okay, by 25 you should get married, by 27 you should have this, two babies, five babies. But I think right now, uh, in the world of internet, I don't think, it's it's pretty similar. There's no timelines, it's all in your head. Uh, yeah, even with whatever I'm doing right now, like it's not a conventional job. It's like traveling with a camera, editing and like, yeah, like 10, 15 years ago, this job wouldn't have existed. Probably like, yeah, of course there were TV presenters, but with like a big crew, you need like a lot of investments. Right now I'm just talking to a GoPro, 300 euros camera, and I'm standing in Moscow and drinking this uh, Russian milk. So there are actually no timelines in life. I don't know if he will teach me about some timeline or not. Hmm? No recording? Okay. He wants me to stop recording, so we stop recording. The Escon thing. These boy, I met these boys there. Uh, they're from India. Privet. Privet. Jai Shri Ram. And these guys are dropping me to the city center. And of course, the night light, like the night view of Moscow, is pretty lit. Because 200 years old. 200 years old building. Approx. 200. Damn. No, no, yeah, but like, yeah. Fuck, like the night drive in Moscow is like so beautiful. <laughs> Fuck, I think Moscow city in the night looks like... 
amazing. I'm, I'm more curious about these blue buildings, like these. They look so good. Yeah, they're hotels and apartments. Ah, okay. It's like a little mini Gurgaon. <laughs> How long you've lived in Russia? It's been like uh, seven years for me. Seven years for you? Yeah. And five years for you? Yeah, five years for him. Five years for him, five years for him. And uh, seven days for me. <laughs> Okay, boys and girls, this is the biggest church, yes. or biggest Orthodox church in Moscow. Yes, yes, yes. Nice. In the world. In the world? Yes. Biggest Orthodox, in the biggest world. Orthodox church in the world. Beautiful. Yeah. One more thing, these guys were telling me that uh, due to the recent drone attack in Moscow, wait, 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 let me. Drone attack in Moscow. The GPS has not been working properly, right? Uh, yes, the GPS uh, flickers when you're in the you know, center. near to the oh, yes, near in to the center, center, near to the red square, etc. Because of the jammers, they because used of, to, uh, yeah. Because of the jammers, it's not working properly. Drones, uh, the only way the drones work is via GPS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. And by the way, I also like usually carry my drone to the places where I go. But uh, someone told me, don't get your drone to Russia, or else you will be uh, mostly in trouble. So that's why I didn't get it. So, but yeah. That's Moscow in the night, beautiful. <laughs> I mean, one guy is actually like navigating and one guy is driving and I'm just <laughs> yeah. holding the camera. <laughs> guys, what's happening guys? A pilot and a co-pilot. <laughs> pilot and a co-pilot and a cameraman, but cameraman never dies. Uh, cameraman never dies. Cameraman never dies. <laughs> the boys just dropped me. Ciao, ciao, bye bye.